Shalom, today is May 6th, and it is day 213 of the war in Israel. Today is also Holocaust Remembrance Day in Israel. A few minutes before filming here, we experienced the one-minute siren that Israel hears uh, very loudly to uh, stand quietly and remember for one minute the six million Jews that died during the Holocaust. Let's take a look into the uh, most read newspapers that Israelis read today. And a lot of it has to do with the Holocaust um, survivors in the shadow of October 7th. And it reads here, a picture of victory. And we see a Holocaust, Holocaust survivor with his fighter grandchildren are fighting today in the war in Israel. It's a picture of the continuation of the Jewish people from surviving to defending. There's also big news about a deadly barrage that happened yesterday towards the Eng, the Kerem Shalom uh, crossing between Gaza and uh, Israel. Let's take a look, a deeper look inside as we will uh, turn the page together. Israel v'milchama, Israel's at war. While talks are going on about ceasefire, there have been casualties and uh, injured ones from shooting into the Otef Aza settlements around uh, the Gaza Strip. The fighters, IDF fighters, Israeli fighters, kept or guarded the tanks and they were killed from the shooting that came from Gaza. Here they are. It says saying goodbye from Reuven. Here is Reuven from Tal, Tal Shavit, and Ido Teseta, three um, uh, IDF fighters that were guarding the crossing and the tanks. Um, as Israel is preparing for an operation in Rafa, and it reads, a heavy barrage was launched over to the Otef, the settlement surrounding Gaza. While the preparation of the IDF is to uh, enter Rafa is at its heat, and uh, forces and tanks and other um, armed vehicles are laid out in the last few weeks next to the border with Gaza, and they're waiting for the command to go. Three more fighters were severely injured, and nine other fighters are injured in lighter conditions. Here it is in Kerem Shalom. This is the crossing right after um, the, the attack. And this is not all. In the northern border with Lebanon, Hezbollah launched over 100 rockets yesterday towards Kiryat Shmonats, uh, a city up there, a Jewish city. And many other uh, homes and cars were completely destroyed. Heads of municipalities there say whoever thinks that the residents, the Israeli residents, will just come back to their homes, uh, being barvazim bamidbach, meaning ducks in a shooting range, is, is, is uh, wrong. So people are still evacuated, and it's completely unsafe to go back to their homes. And people that will go back eventually to their homes, they'll find their homes shattered, their cars burned. So yesterday, they are saying it was one of the hardest days in the northern border. I'm turning the page and I'll read here, Yom HaZikaron, the Remembrance Day of the Shoah, the Holocaust, and Gvura in the Might. 2024, we see here the Jude, uh, the, yellow, the yellow badge that Jews had to wear during the Holocaust, during the years uh, 1941-1945. And it reads, it's the, the March of Life in the Shadow of the Massacre of October 7th. And it reads, Today, Hayom, Bapam HaShloshim Eshesh, in the 36th time, a march of life will leave the concentration and destruction camp of Jews in Auschwitz. And who will lead the thousands of marchers? It will be seven Holocaust survivors that also survived October 7, living so close to the Gaza Strip. The head of the agency says the uh, 7th of October attack caused a very big shaking in the whole uh, Jewish world. We will continue to fight anti-Semitism. He says, Ani Khan, I am here because there's a chilling resemblance between the cruelty of the neo-Nazim uh, uh, against the Jews in Auschwitz and the cruelty of the neo-Nazim terrorists uh, nowadays against the Jews around the Gaza Strip and still to Sderot and Ofakim and on Israeli land. He says, I am here because there's a strong connection between the march of life of the Holocaust survivors as a remembrance of the march of death in 1945 to the march of life of the Israeli residents 
civilians that go back to their homes after October 7th. So the theme here is survival, survival of the Holocaust and survival of October 7th. Here's another article about the remembrance of the Holocaust Day. And they're speaking about the different events that will happen today across Israel um, and the difference between the, the Holocaust um, back then in the 1940s and October 7th. It is the lack of ability to defend ourselves. So the difference is that Israel can defend herself today. The Jews back then had no ability to defend themselves. Here's a beautiful article, very uh, heartwarming, of the connection between the Holocaust survivors and their grandchildren that are fighting in the Israeli Defense Forces today. Lechima, fighting from generation to generation. Here's Holocaust survivor Helen Hoffman, 84 years old, and her grandson, Roi Levi, 32 years old, a commander in the IDF. And this is C.P. Gendelman, 85-year-old Holocaust survivor, with her grandson saluting each other, a 21-year-old, also a combat fighter in the IDF, and Yaakov Tsuran, 84 years old, with his grandson, 21 years old, also an elite unit uh, combat fighter. And these are specific stories about the grandparents as survivors of the Holocaust, and the grandchildren's uh, stories during the, this war. They highlight the Matzpen Ha'irki, the uh, compass of values, they call it, and about the love of their lives, which is Israel. Heights of Sina. Sina is hatred or hate. And it reads, Ha'olam negdenu, the world is against us. Here is a pro-Palestinian demonstration in Arzot Habrit, the United States of America. Here's a pro-Palestinian uh, demonstration uh, demonstrating for Gaza in France, in Paris. And here's another one in Germany. It says, students stand together against genocide and occupation. Yes, also we stand against genocide and occupation. But it's a, it's a wolf in a sheep's skin, these terms. The professor Uriah Shavit from Tel Aviv University says that soon it might be impossible for Jews to live freely in public places in the Western world. It is concerning, but it may not be surprising. Before we end, I want to show you one more article about Chaim Shiloh, a 99-year-old Holocaust survivor. And he says, and, the, and they say, the first time Chaim Shiloh survived and was able to escape with his, escape from, with his family from Nazi Germany. And the second time, he sat in his safe room in his home in Nirim, close to the Gaza border, uh, while the Hamas attack on October 7th happened. In the age of 99, he assumes he will not go back to his kibbutz, Nirim. And he's asking, what, what in the world am I leaving the next generations? More wars? So he's not very hopeful. And he, here we see a picture of him with his great-grandchildren on the kibbutz, and he says, it is hard to decide, to determine if I'm lucky or if I'm out of luck. And as you read his story and look at these pictures, family pictures, you get a feeling of, you know, there's there so many details here. You get a feeling of his personality, of the family uh, that he grew up in, and amazing, amazing stories. Yet he's not very hopeful. And this kind of makes me sad as Israel still needs to defend herself. And the older generation feels there's really no, not much hope. So this Holocaust Remembrance Day is a little bit different than others as Israel is still at war. As we uh, saw in the beginning of this uh, report, three soldiers died yesterday and great barrages of rockets came from Gaza and from the north to Israel still today. For more updates and stories, go to allisrael.com, follow us on our social media, like this video if you liked it and share it with your friends and family. This is Rotem again for All Israel News. Thank you.